fatto un meraviglioso sogno. There I was just dreaming about being the mega yacht owner when all of a sudden Eh? Ah, sì. Prova, prova. D'accordo. Okay, it was just a dream. But this is truly a wonderful yacht that I'm just about to try out. It's the Custom Line 108. The 108 is the latest beauty from Custom Line, part of the Ferretti Group. It's a maxi yacht, 33 meters long, made of fiberglass, with a distinctive sporty look, which makes me wonder, how can a boat this size be classed as sporty? Look at the profile, the lines of the windows at the bow, the superstructure, in general, just feels modern. But it's not just that obvious, it's performance that counts. That's when you really see if it is what it seems to be, and that's we'll find out later. Let's go inside first. The open space is made up of a living and dining area, but there's a cocktail cabinet too, where, sliding the oak top back, there's a sink. The TV screen flips to reveal the wine storage, and at the centre of the boat, there's a C-shaped sofa, tables made by Polyform, and a Fontana art lamp. The glass, straight ahead, is really a sliding door, which opens up to the outside walkway, where the reversible washboard makes for a nice terrace on the sea. The lunch area is one side of an albeit well-lit bulkhead with a glass and steel table, which sits ten in leather-bound armchairs made by Frau. On the other side, there's a low cupboard for plates, glassware, cutlery. The Custom Line 108 is very impressive inside. It's very luxurious, but not pompous. Elegant finishings, exclusive furnishings have had the utmost attention put into every detail. For example, the light and shade controls have all been created ad hoc with the designer PLH Italia. The white body main suite is located at the bow. It appears to be even bigger than it actually is because of the gigantic windows. The double bed comes with a cream leather bedhead, a theme which is carried out on the TV frame. Under the window there's a small glass table, opposite which there's a nice reading area. In the entrance area there's a writing desk. To the left there's a door through to the large walk-in wardrobe. My dream walk-in wardrobe, by the way. While straight ahead, there's the bathroom with its three distinctive areas, made with light Botticino and Portero marble, with its dark bronze colour veining. Sul ponte inferiore ci sono due cabine matrimoniali, ciascuna col proprio bagno e la. On the lower deck, there are two double cabins, each with its own bathroom and changing room. Then there are two double cabins, en suite, of course. We are talking proper suites too, at sea level, infused by natural light thanks to big windows that have integrated portholes and no posts. The two at the stern are doubles, furnished with vanity units and TVs embedded in the wall. The two at the bow have single beds and are finished off with a vanity area with poof stall and separate toilet. The reading lights are made by Floss, especially by Philippe Stark. Outside areas at the bow are completely private, even when you've lots of guests on board, because there are two sun decks on deck, a dining area with a couple of sofas and two tables you can join into one. 
Una scala con gradini di rovere bianco conduce dal sottocoperta al ponte principale del... A stairway with white oak stairs leads us below to the main deck area, where you'll find the main cabin and a large living room. The stairs keep going onto the helm from where you get to the upper deck. The flying bridge stretches out over 36 square meters. It can be completely designed to your taste. On this model, one of the four has been sold even before the product launch. There are two driver's positions, so the captain can have a co-pilot. The Alfresco lunching area can be covered by an aerodynamic hardtop, where there's a large sofa with two tables that can be joined into one when needed. In front, there's a cocktail bar, decked out with sink, bottle fridge, ice maker, and a place to serve aperitifs to your guests who can sit on these stools. The rest of the bridge is furnished with these three chaise longes and a rounded sofa that can turn. The stern area of the bridge is lucky enough to have a special view onto the cockpit below and the beach club. The cockpit is really roomy. It's even got a large sofa that can transform into a chaise lounge that stretches from stern to bow and another sun deck. The central wooden and steel table, which seats eight, finishes off the furnishings. To the left, at the beginning of the walkway, there's access to the machine rooms. La poppa è organizzata con il Dual Mode Transom, uno speciale brevetto Ferretti. Il portellone si apre. A special Ferretti patent, the Dual Mode Transom, can be found at the stern. The hatch opens as you would expect, allowing for easy access to the tender, which slips into the water without a hoist. Then the hatch turns like this, and the dunnage or baggage store becomes a large beach area. There's even space for a jet ski. In the machine room, there are two MTU 2000M 94 engines, each one boasting 16 cylinders and 2,638 horsepower. Questa postazione di pilotaggio è spaziale e non mi riferisco solo al fatto The driver's post is spacious and I'm not just talking about the facts there are lots of instruments the screens are all easily visible but the other thing is that there are actually two of some instruments just in case the first one fails like these engine clocks for example they're analog not digital Con tutti questi cavalli a disposizione si potrebbe pensare che i consumi siano esorbitanti With all this horsepower at hand, you might think consumption would be enormous. Well, it probably will be if we go really fast. We'll check that out later. But what about if we're just ambling? It's not eating up that much. We're going 6.8 knots and consumption is 10 liters an hour each one, which means 3 liters a mile. Just think about other smaller boats and you'll realize that there's no comparison. The boat's moving nicely and not consuming much. Adesso accelero un po', ma poco, perché voglio fornire altri dati relativi al consumo in dislocamento. Vi chiederete perché? Beh, chi ha uno yacht di questa dimensione, chi ne è il... I'm going to start going a bit quicker, just a bit, because I want to look at the other data whilst we're moving. Are you wondering why? Well, anyone owning a boat like this will be watching what the crew is doing in terms of consumption eager to ask if they can get it more economical. Look at this, we're now going eight knots, but consumption hasn't really gone up. 11 liters an hour per engine, 10% more than before. È incredibile sentire come con... It's incredible how these small paddles are so easy to handle. Let's think, 2,638 horsepower times two is 5,276 horsepower. Ora siamo a 10 nodi, ma fate attenzione al dato relativo. We are now doing 10 knots, but look at the consumption. 
Each engine is using 42 litres an hour, so that's 84 litres in total. Look how little consumption has changed, but how much faster we are going. Yes, not much, eh? Su una nave di queste dimensioni, beh, direi che è fantastica la stabilità. Poi qui ci sono delle pinne stabilizzatrici che funzionano. It's remarkable how steady a boat of these dimensions can be. The stabilizing fins work whether you are moving or moored, and they've even found space to fit in another two gyroscopic ones. Un 33 metri, e comunque anche altre barche di analoghe dimensioni, hanno bisogno di un comandante. On a 33 metre long boat, like other boats this size, you need a captain, and then a crew which needs to comprise of a machine director, one or two shipmen and one or two hostesses. The crew cabins are right at the tip of the bow on this custom line 108, where, along with the cabins, there's a kitchen and eating area. Ogni anno sono circa 100 i nuovi armatori di mega yacht. Every year there are about 100 new owners of mega yachts like this one. But there are many more people who are invited on board. So if by chance you end up as one of these lucky people, I'm here right now to show you what your cabin might look like. The main cabin is pretty quiet, 56 dBA at full speed, so whoever is in there definitely will sleep well. But what about the guests? Cabins at the stern, doubles, and it's more noisy as we get closer to the engines, but we're talking 67 dBA at tops. Cabine doppie di prua, 61, 62 dBA, sempre alla massima velocità. The double cabin at the bow, 61, 62 dBA tops. Just think how quiet it's going to be when the boat is sailing, taking you from one port to the next. I'd choose one of these. A The Boat Show piloto qualsiasi barca, dai gommoncini di 3, 4, 5 metri, sino alle navi. I'll drive anything here on the boat show, three, four, five meter ribs, up to ships, but I must tell you that this custom line 108 has surprised me, and will you too if you look from the bow to the back to the horizon and how quickly it responds at the helm. I didn't think it would be this easy to manage. È reattiva, è veloce, imposto la virata e immediatamente... It's reactive, fast, I make it turn and it does, straight away, then I make it turn the other way and it's so quick the boat's right back where it was before. It's brilliant. Non avete idea di che cosa voglia dire portare in planata questa imbarcazione. Si sentono i motori che spingono dannatamente. You have no idea what it means to make a boat like this plane. You can feel the engines pushing incessantly, the turbines going one after another, and at 17 knots you begin to understand what going fast on a ship means, because this is planing. It's a ship planing, so it's a fast ship. Let's have a look at some cruising data. 1,859 revs, 18 and a half knots. Il mare non si sente. Abbiamo sollevato un po' di onda compiendo delle evoluzioni e anche il mare si sta gonfiando. You don't even notice the sea. We've raised the waves a little with some turbine and the sea is a little choppy as there's a strong wind, but it's not changing anything. It's just like we're in port, dry dock even. With engines at 2,130 revs a minute, so still in cruising range, speed is 23 knots. Just think, you could be going as fast as 23 knots. I've checked out the engine spec and see that I can push it to 2,400 revs a minute, which I'm doing, full speed ahead. The sea and the wind are against us, and we're doing 26 knots, so we can say this is truly a sporty boat.
Don't believe it. I've even moored it up. <laughs>